Hi, third and fourth graders. It's Mrs. Citrin here uh, with for our second installment of the BFG. I hope you enjoyed last week. It really uh, gets a lot more interesting now because uh, we're actually going to be introduced to the BFG and find out who he is and what his, some of his peculiar habits are. And I don't know if you remember when we read... Um, the uh, 12 labors of Hercules. And we were always interested in knowing what tools Hercules brought with him on each one of his tasks. And this time, let's think about what the BFG has with him. He has a suitcase. He's carrying a big black suitcase when Sophie sees him outside her window. And he's carrying a very, very long trumpet. And he uses that trumpet um, and he puts it in the window of the Gucci children's bedroom. They live across the street from Sophie's orphanage, and he blows something in, and she does not know what it is. He doesn't know what he has in the suitcase. And he captures her, and he takes her away to his cave where he lives. And she's sitting there, and she's frightened. She doesn't know who this person is. Obviously, he's a giant, and he's very unusual, and he speaks in a very unusual way. And now in the section we're going to read today, we understand who he is and his peculiarities. He's quite peculiar uh, in the most charming sort of way. And he's a great example of the made-up words of Roald Dahl. And he uses quite a few of them um, in the story. Uh, words like canny bully, referring to a cannibal, somebody who eats people, wopsy whiffling, uh, human beings, which isn't too complimentary about people. He calls humans instead of human beings, beans, B-E-A-N-S. He's confused. Bundongle, another word for confusion, gobble funk. Um, and Roald Dahl made up all of these wonderful, wonderful words that you understand the meaning of in the context of the story. Before I start reading, I also want to explain one more thing. Roald Dahl was English and um, he's writing from a very British point of view. And some of the references in the story are things that English children will understand immediately and American children might not. So for example, he's talking about Wales and the BFG um, gets confused between the country of Wales, W-A-L-E-S, and the huge, huge um, mammal, Wales, W-H-A-L-E-S. And he refers to Wellington, which is um, a city in New Zealand, and Wellington boots, which all British children have a pair of. They're these big, tall rain boots. Our jersey's an island off the coast of England, and it also refers to a sweater. And a cardigan is also a sweater that buttons down the front. So if you know these sorts of things, it will make more sense to you. The jokes will make more sense. All right, should we get started? All right, so this is where we left off. Sophie had just been put in his um, cave. There she is right here. Um, and she's looking up and she sees a cave filled with walls and walls and shelves and shelves of glass jars. Doesn't know where she is. And this chapter is called the BFG and he introduces himself here. The giant picked up the trembling Sophie with one hand and carried her across the cave and put her on the table. Now he really is going to eat me, Sophie thought. The giant sat down and stared hard at Sophie. He had truly enormous ears, and each one was as big as the wheel of a truck. And he seemed to be able to move them inwards and outwards from his head as he wished. I is hungry, the giant boomed, and he grinned, showing massive square teeth. The teeth were very white and very square, and they sat in his mouth like huge slices of white bread. <gasps> Please don't eat me, Sophie stammered. The giant let out a belly of laughter. Just because I is a giant, you think I is a man gobbling candy bull? He shouted. You is about right. Giants is all canny bully and murderful, and they does gobble up human beings. We is in giant country now. Giants is everywhere around. Out there, us has the famous bone-crunching giant. Bone-crunching giant crunches up two wopsy whiffly human beings for supper every night. Noise is ear-busting. Noise of crunching bones goes crackety-crack for miles around. Oh, ouch, Sophie said. Bone-crunching giant likes to gobble human beings from Turkey, the giant said. Every night, bone-cruncher is gall galloping off to Turkey to gobble Turks. 
Sophie's sense of patriotism, was suddenly so bruised by this remark that she became quite angry. Why, Turks, she blurted out. What's wrong with the English? Bone-crunching giants as Turks is tasting oh ever so much juicier and much more scrum delicious. Bone Cruncher says Turkish human beings has a clamory flavor. He says Turks from Turkey is tasting of turkey. Oh, I suppose they would, Sophie said. Of course they would, the giant shouted. Every human being is diddly and different. Some is grumdily umptious and some is ucky slush. Greeks is all full of ucky slush. No giant is eating Greeks ever. Oh, why not? Sophie asked. Greeks from Greece is all tasting greasy, the giant said. I imagine that's possible, too, Sophie said. And she was wondering, with a bit of a tremble, what all this talk about eating people was leading up to. Whatever happened, she simply must play along with this peculiar giant and smile at his jokes. And here is Sophie sitting on the table in the giant's cave, and they're having this discussion about what giants eat. But were they jokes? Perhaps the great brute was just working up an appetite by talking about food. As I am saying, the giant went on, all human beings is having different flavors. Human beings from Panama is tasting very strong of hats. Oh, why hats, Sophie asked. You is not very clever, the giant said, moving his great ears in and out. I thought all human beings is full of brains, but your head is emptier than a bandongle. Do you like vegetables, Sophie asked, hoping to steer the conversation toward a slightly less dangerous kind of food. You is trying to change the subject, the giant said sternly. We is having an interesting babblement about the taste of a human being. The human being is not a vegetable. Oh, but the bean is a vegetable, Sophie said. Not the human being, the giant said. The human being has two legs and a vegetable has no legs at all. Sophie didn't argue anymore. The last thing she wanted to do was make the giant cross. The human being, the giant went on, is coming in dillions of different flavors. For instance, human beings from Wales is tasting very whooshy of fish. There is something very fishy about whales. Oh, you mean whales, Sophie said. Whales is something quite different. Whales is whales, the giant said. Don't gobble funk around with words. I will now give you another example. Human beings from Jersey has the most disgustable, disgustable woolly tickle on the tongue, the giant said. Human beings from Jersey is tasting of cardigans. Oh, you mean Jersey, Sophie said. You is once again gobble-funking, the giant shouted. Don't do it. This is a serious and a snitching subject. May I continue? Oh, please do, Sophie said. Danes from Denmark is ever so much tasting of dogs, the giant went on. Of course, Sophie said, they taste of Great Danes. Wrong, cried the giant, slapping his thigh. Danes from Denmark is tasting doggy because they is tasting of Labradors. Then what do the people of Labrador taste, like, taste of, Sophie asked. Danes, the giant cried triumphantly, Great Danes. Aren't you getting a bit mixed up, Sophie says. I is a very mixed up giant, the giant said, but I ever does do my best. And I is not nearly as mixed up as the other giants. I know one who gallops all the way to Wellington for his supper. Wellington, Sophie asked. Where is Wellington? Your head is full of squashed flies, the giant said. Wellington is in New Zealand. The human beings in Wellington has an especially scrum taste. So says the welly eating giant. What do the people of Wellington taste of, Sophie asked. Boots, the giant said. Of course, said Sophie, I should have known. Sophie decided that this conversation had now gone on long enough. If she was going to be eaten, she'd rather get it over and done with right away than be kept hanging around anymore. What sort of human beings do you eat, she asked, trembling. Me, shouted the giant, his mighty voice making the glass jars rattle on the shelves. Me? Gobbling up human beings? This I never. The others, yes. All the others is gobbling them up every night, but not me. I is a freaky giant. I is a nice and jumbly giant. I is the only nice and jumbly giant in giant country. I is the big, friendly giant. I is the BFG. What is your name? My name is Sophie, Sophie said, hardly daring to believe the good news she had just heard. Next chapter.
the giants. Now we're going to meet all the rest of them. And they are not as nice as the B of G. But if you are so nice and friendly, Sophie said, then why did you snatch me from my bed and run away with me? Because you saw me, the big friendly giant answered. If anyone is ever seeing a giant, he or she must be taken away, hip switch. Why, asked Sophie. Well, first of all, said the giant, human beings is not really believing in giants, is they? Human beings is not thinking we exist. Well, I do, Sophie said. Ah, but that is only because you have seen me, cried the BFG. I cannot possibly allow anyone, even little girls, to be seeing me and staying at home. The first thing you do would be to be scuttling around, yodeling the news that you were actually seeing a giant, and then a great giant hunt, a mighty giant look-see, would be starting up all over the world with the human beings all rummaging for the great giant you saw and getting wildly excited. People would be coming rushing and bushing after me with goodness knows what, and they would be catching me and locking me into a cage to be stared at. They would be putting me into the zoo or the bunkum house with all those squiggly hippa dump dillies and crocodown dillies. Oh, I said that wrong. Hippo dumplings and crocodown dillies. So, you know, hippopotamuses and crocodiles. Sophie knew that was what the giant said was true. And if any person ever reported actually having seen a giant haunting the streets of a town at night, there would most certainly be a terrific hullabaloo across the world. I will bet you, the giant went on, that you would have been splashing the news all over the wonky world, wouldn't you, if I hadn't wiggled you away? I suppose I would, Sophie said. And that would never do, said the BFG. So what will happen to me now, Sophie asked. If you does go back, you will be telling the world, said the BFG, most likely on the telly, telly bunkum box and the radio squeaker. So you will just have to be staying here with me for the rest of your life. Oh, no, cried Sophie. Oh, yes, said the BFG. But I am warning you not to ever go whiffling about out of this cave without I is with you, or you will be coming to an ucky mucky end. I is showing you now who is going to eat you up if they is ever catching even one tiny little glimp of you. The big friendly giant picked Sophie up off the table and carried her to the cave entrance. He rolled the huge stone to one side and said, Peep out over there, little girl, and tell me what you is seeing. Sophie, sitting on the BFG's hand, peeped out of the cave. The sun was up now, and the shining, fiery hot over the great yellow wasteland with its blue rocks and dead trees. Is you seeing them? the BFG asked. Sophie, squinting through the glare of the sun, saw several tre tremendous tall figures moving among the rocks about 500 yards away. Three or four others were sitting quite motionless on the rocks themselves. This is giant country, the BFG said. Those is all giants, every one. It was a brain-boggling sight. The giants were all naked except for a sort of short skirt around their waists, and their skins were burned brown by the sun. But it was the sheer size of each one of them that boggled Sophie's brain most of all. They were simply colossal, far taller and wider than the BFG, upon whose hand she was now sitting. And oh, how ugly they were. Many of them had large bellies. All of them had long arms and big feet. And they were too far away for their faces to be seen clearly. And perhaps that was a good thing. What on earth are they doing? Sophie asked. Nothing, said the BFG. They is just moochling and foochling around and waiting for the night to come. Then they will all be galloping off to places where people is living to find their suppers. You mean to Turkey, Sophie asked. Bone-crunching giant will be galloping to Turkey, of course, said the BFG. But the others will be whiffling to all sorts of flung-away places like Wellington for the booty flavor and Panama for the heady taste. And every giant is having his own favorite hunting ground. Do they ever go to England, Sophie asked? Often, the BFG said. They say the English is tasting ever so wonderfully of crowd, crowd scallop. I'm not quite sure I know what that means, Sophie said. Meanings is not important, said the BFG. I cannot be right all the time. Quite often I is left instead of right. And are all those beastly giants over there really going off again tonight to eat people, Sophie asked? All of them is guzzling human beings every night, the BFG answered. 
all of them excepting me. That is why you will be coming to an ucky mucky end if any of them should ever be getting as gogglers upon you. You would be swallowed up like a piece of frumpkin pie all in one dollop. But eating people is horrible, Sophie cried. It's frightful. Why doesn't someone stop them? And who, please, is going to be stopping them? asked the BFG. Couldn't you, said Sophie. Never in a pig's whistle, cried the BFG. All of those man-eating giants is enormous and very fierce. They is all at least two times my wideness and double my royal highness. And here's the wonderful illustration of them. This is what Sophie's looking at from far away, sitting on the giant's hand in the mouth of his cave. Twice as high as you, cried Sophie. Easily that, said the BFG. You was seeing them in the distance, but just you wait till you get them up close. Those giants is all at least 50 feet tall with huge muscles and cockles alive, alive-o. I is the titchy one. I is the runt. I is only 24 feet and bare feet. 24 feet is puddle nuts in giant country. You mustn't feel bad about it, Sophie said. I think you are just great. Why, even your toes must be as big as sausages. Bigger, said the BFG, looking pleased. They is as big as bumple hammers. How many giants are there out there, Sophie asked. Nine altogether, answered the BFG. That means, said Sophie, that somewhere in the world, every single night, nine wretched people get carried away and eaten alive? Oh, more, said the BFG. It is all depending, you see, on how big the human beings is. Japanese beans is very small, so a giant will need to gobble up about six Japanese before he is feeling full up. Others, like the Norway people and the Yankee Doodles, those are the Americans, is ever so much bigger, and usually two or three of those makes a good tuck-in. But do those disgusting giants go out ev to every single country in the world, Sophie asked? All countries except in Greece is getting visited sometime or another, the BFG answered. The country which a giant visits is depending upon how he is feeling. If it is very warm weather and a giant is feeling as hot as a sizzle pan, he will probably go galloping far up to the Frisbee North to get himself an Eskimo or two to cool him down. A night's fast Eskimo is to a giant is like a lovely ice cream lolly to you. I'll take your word for it, Sophie said. And then again, if it is a frosty night and the giant is fridging with cold, he will probably point his nose toward the sweltering hotlands to guzzle a few hottentots to warm him up. How perfectly horrible, Sophie said. Nothing hots a cold giant up like a hot hottentot, the BFG said. And if you were to put me down on the ground and I was to walk out among them now, Sophie said, would they really eat me up? Like a whiff swiddle, cried the BFG. And what is more? You was so small, they wouldn't even have to chew you. The first one to be seeing you would pick you up in his fingers, and down you'd go like a drop of drain water. Let's go back inside, Sophie said. I hate even watching them. And there she is, sitting on the BFG's hand, and they are having this discussion. All right. The next chapter is called The Marvelous Ears, and the BFG does have really wonderful ears, but we will continue with that next time.